Hey God Chasers, all of us who have tried to press into our prayer lives know how easy it is for us to get distracted, for our minds to wander in all different directions. In this video, I want to share with you a model that Jesus gave to help his disciples learn how to pray. You're watching Deeper in Christ. So I want to break down what has been referred to by many people as the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. Uh, maybe it's better called the Disciples' Prayer because Jesus gave it to his disciples to teach them how to pray. Now, I think that there is some value in reciting the words as a prayer, as many times people do, but I think it was much more than that. I think Jesus was trying to give them some practical principles to teach them how to guide their prayer lives so that they don't get distracted and they stay focused on the right things. So let's break it down into six parts and get right into it. In verse 9, when Jesus starts off, he said, You should come to the Lord and say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus is telling us that when we first come and approach the Lord in prayer, we should be coming... Um, understanding who God is and who we are in relationship to Him. He talks about uh, us coming to Him as our Father, that we come to Him as children, um, as sons and daughters of the living God. And He says, hallowed be your name, which means set apart or holy be your name. It's, it's focusing our attention on who we're approaching. And it's such a, a healthy way to uh, start prayer. Just to begin to pray, God, you are, you are so good. Your word says that you're good. You're a provider. You're a good father. You're my shepherd. You are a savior. All these different aspects of characteristics of God, of his names and who he is and the things that he's done. When we begin to approach God starting off and saying, God, I know who you are and you are here for me and I'm approaching you as you are God and I am and just a son and daughter coming to you in need. It's a beautiful way to begin our prayer life and help get our focus on the most important thing, which is adoring the Lord. Then Jesus says we should pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here Jesus is, is helping us position ourselves that prayer is not all about just the things that we want. Of course, that's an important part of prayer, but it's all about God's will being accomplished. We should be living our lives for the glory of God. And so Jesus says, when you come to God, you should be praying for his will to be done in your life. And so when I get to this point, I, I'm praying, God, I let your will be done in my life. And if there's any way in my life that's leading me off the path of your perfect will, show it to me so I can get corrected. I'm praying, God, let your kingdom come into my marriage and let your kingdom come to my family and my kids and how we cooperate and work in unity as a family. Lord, let your kingdom come to our church and, and let us be in line with your will corporately as a church. And so just beginning to pray, God, I'm not just coming to you because I want my will to be done and I want you to do things my way, but I'm coming to you because I want to live for your glory and I want to see your will accomplished in my life. After that, Jesus says we should pray, give us this day our daily bread. Now, we understand that part of prayer is coming to God with our needs, and God understands that, and he wants to meet our needs. Jesus talks about in another portion of scripture that God is a good father, and he desires to give his children good gifts. And so there's nothing wrong with us coming to him and asking him to help us. It just shouldn't make up the majority of our prayer life. This is just one aspect out of many principles Jesus is outlining. And so in here, I'm examining my life and I'm saying, Lord, I've got this situation going on. I need your wisdom. I need your direction. Will you help me walk through this season in a, in a way that honors you? And I'm asking him not only for my own needs, but also for the needs of my wife, my children, my church, other people in my life and my family and friends. They have needs as well. And, and this time I'm bringing those requests to God and I'm asking him to help and asking him to move in these situations and laying them at his feet and letting him move. After that, Jesus says we should pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now there's two aspects to this. The first one is asking God for forgiveness for our own sin. Part of uh, a healthy prayer life is time of confession and allowing the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. And so this is a time where I will look at my own life, my attitudes, my words. Have I done anything that's offensive to the Lord? And I'm going to confess those to him and ask him, uh, for forgiveness and to choose to repent and turn from those things. But the other aspect of it has to do with our relationship with other people. And the connotation here is that, that God will forgive us in the same way that we forgive others. So this is a time where it's really important that we search our hearts and begin to analyze our relationships of people in our lives, those that are closest to us, and even maybe people that hurt us years and years ago. If we cannot hold on to bitterness and unforgiveness, Jesus says in another passage that that will actually hinder our prayers being answered. And so this is a time to search our hearts and our relationships and say, God, is there anything between me and any other person that I need to make right? Scripture is clear that if that's the case, we're to go to that person and, and clear things up with them. 
but asking God, show me if my relationships are healthy and if there's any way that I have sinned against someone else, help me to see it and then make it right so that I can be in right relationship with you as well. Then Jesus says that we should pray, God, do not lead me into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. All of us have temptations that we're faced with. Uh, My temptations are probably different than yours and vice versa, but all of us have things that the devil will try to Uh, pull our hearts away from the Lord by putting them in front of us. And so we need God's help to resist temptation. And so there's nothing wrong with praying, God, help me when I go through this day to be able to resist temptation. Give me a spiritual fortitude to not give in to those things of the flesh that are going to cause me to sin and to stumble. But also deliver me from the evil one. It's a prayer for protection. God, you see the enemy's plans for my life and what he wants to do. And, but you can, you're able to keep him from having uh, his will in my life. And so this is a time to pray for your, your family, pray for your church, pray for your friends, pray that God would protect your mind. Often I'll pray uh, that God will protect me physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that in every way God will put a hedge of protection around me to keep me from falling into sin and also being attacked by the enemy. And then finally, Jesus says to close out your prayer time by saying, God, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a time for us to get our perspective. We we started off in our prayer time focusing on God and who he is and his character and his goodness. And then we move through, through some personal things and our needs and our requests and asking God to help us. And Jesus says, now close out your prayer time doing what you did at the beginning and get your focus on who God is. Just spend time worshiping God. Say, God, you're worthy of all of my worship. You're worthy of all my praise of every breath that I breathe. And it helps us get our perspective off of ourselves again and place them back onto God so that when we walk out of our time of prayer, we're filled with faith and we're filled with the Spirit and our eyes are focused on the one who's able to help us in our time of need. Oftentimes when I'm praying and I get stuck, I'll begin to go through this prayer model in my mind because it helps to guide us from the beginning to the end and it helps us to cover a well-rounded, healthy prayer time. In the next video, I want to tell you about some of the things that Jesus said about prayer in his Sermon on the Mount. Click on the link on the screen and I'll see you there.